Is it true you grew up in funeral homes? <laughs> The good, the bad, the ugly. Today, I'm back at it for round two of answering all of your burning personal questions about myself. That way, you can get to know me a little bit better. But hopefully, things don't get too crazy. All right, let's dive right in. No, I never grew up in a funeral home per se, but the family business was funeral homes. Yes, my grandfather started a funeral home and my father and my uncle grew up above the funeral home. Me as a kid, we lived in a different house, but occasionally I would go to the funeral home and play in like the basement in like the kid playroom. So I was around it, but didn't actually grow up in it. Have you ever injured yourself? Can you talk about some personal injuries you have had? So many of you know, I played division one soccer here in the United States and played soccer growing up my whole life and I've had multiple injuries. I've had three big injuries. One, I did fracture my L5 transverse process when I was 16, 17 years old. I think it was due to a slide tackle. Then the next day, had a pretty bad back pain. Thought it was muscular. I worked on different therapies to get it feeling better because we had a state championship to go to. And then during that time, it was a two week kind of rehab played and it just hurt so much. Ended up getting an x-ray and a bone scan and showed that there was a fracture. So then after that, you can't put somebody in a cast. So I actually ended up wearing a corset that had two metal rods going through the back for about a month to allow it to heal. I still always have a little bit of right lower back pain due to like muscle spasms, those sorts of things. So I'm always aware of it. Other injury was an ankle injury where I actually had some blood in a tendon sheath on the top of my right foot. So anytime I tried to strike the soccer ball, it stretched out on that and caused like a zing. Ended up having an MRI of that to diagnose it. Again, took time for it to go away. When I was in college, had multiple head injuries that required me actually to sit out due to concussion. The biggest one, I was doing a slide tackle during practice and one of my teammates tried to jump over top of me and that kneed me in the back of the head. Lights didn't go out, but I saw stars. Look at all the pretty stars. So then when I was getting tested to see if I can get back to play, we were doing different activities and it induced seeing flashes of light. So they said, nope can't do anymore. So then I had to take about a month off. I can't be the only one sharing all my injuries. Let me know in the comments if you've had any major surgeries, broken bones, big lacerations. I want to know too. If you can fight 50 chicken size Eric Cartman's or 50 Eric Cartman size chickens, who would you fight? And if you want to see my reaction video, definitely check it out right here. I think I would actually want to fight the 50 chicken sized Eric Cartmans. I always want to see what his creativity would be to try to take me down. I think I'd have a better chance versus the chickens that are Eric Cartman's size, a little bit bigger. And then they got their beaks and could cause more issues and the chickens harbor more diseases. I don't think I've actually ever been in a fight, but I have trained in Krav Maga. It's better just to walk away. I think I'll be the bigger man now, walk away. What gives you the ick as a doctor? Super gross things make me cringe a little bit, but the super gross things to me is like people throwing their feces at medical staff, smearing the walls with it, peeing all over the place. That's kind of like, yeah. I don't mind when people vomit. I don't really mind when people like spit phlegm. That doesn't really bother me. What gives you the ick? Let me know in the comments. Do you dress up for Halloween? If so, what are you going to dress up as this year? I've been a witch doctor. I've been Elvis with a bunch of my buddies. Wolverine. I've been the Joker. That was cool. That was, my wife, Jen, hooked that up really well. What will I be in the future? Maybe I'll be Ken from like the Barbie. I don't know. Is that cool or not cool? What made you choose the ER field of medicine? ER is what everybody knows it as, but we call it ED. It's not erectile dysfunction. It's just referred to as the emergency department. But in the medical world, it's actually called EM, emergency medicine. But I chose it because it's cool. Don't worry, everything will be fine. I go to work and then I leave work, meaning it's shift. So I like not having an office and overhead. I like to just go do my job and then go home. But I liked it because you have to know everything. You have to be ready for everything and you don't know what's coming through the door. And sometimes it's a little nerve wracking, but my personality is one to where I actually thrive in the chaos. What videos are in your YouTube history? My YouTube history is probably like soccer clips. I do listen to music, Kygo, playlists, obviously any weird medical things. Oh, and then also workouts. Now that you're famous, I'm not famous, but have you ever met a celebrity or someone else famous and were they nice or not? Spill the details. One of the most 
famous person that I've met is Noah. You guys know him. The internet, just so you know, is calling her Mommy Sindel. Ooh, he's basically in like Mortal Kombat video games. He's super awesome, he films, he's done gameology. He's got his own filming company, he's super cool. Really nice guy, actually, it was like so nice. And then obviously my wife is famous, she has an Emmy Award. I've met Darius Rucker before, uh, for everybody else, Hootie and the Blowfish, he's like Hootie, but it's Darius Rucker. Great singer, met him in North Carolina. Famous soccer players that I met when I was a kid was Casey Keller, he was the USA national team goalie, as well as uh, played in the Premier League. I sat behind Gronkowski, the football player on an airplane. Would you rather be bitten by a shark or stung by a jellyfish? Probably would rather be stung by majority of the jellyfish out there only because it hurts, but typically there's not permanent damage versus a shark, depending on the shark, could lose a limb, a lot of soft tissue damage, could kill you. But again, the likelihood of getting bitten by a shark is low. Jellyfish probably a little bit higher, especially where I live in Southern California. But you know, some jellyfish, they're no walk in the park. They could be like lethal, so you gotta be really careful. But typically I'm not swimming in those waters, engaging in the activity that would put me at risk for getting stung. What do you do on your off day? So my off days typically including making sure I get about eight hours of sleep. Usually I'm going to be walking for a little bit and working out, lifting weights, maybe going out and getting some food, and then plus or minus maybe playing some golf. That's pretty much a typical day off for me. I have a supplement line that we launched that's awesome. You can definitely check it out, but we've been working on that for many years to perfect the formula and make sure it's effective. It's called Life Happens. Check it out, it's awesome. And then other times, travel, see friends. Me and Jen like to travel as much as possible, see the world, but also filming videos. Everybody's always asking, oh my gosh, is he a real doctor? How the heck does he do all these videos? I work 16 shifts a month in the emergency department, which is full time. And then in my free time, I'm doing other things, including this channel. So I definitely appreciate and really appreciate you guys watching these videos and supporting the channel. What is your astrological sign? Please say Sagittarius. No, I am a Libra. I am the balance, the scales. And it actually does fit my personality. I'm all for balance and equality and making sure that everything is fair. From what I read online, but I'm not like huge in the astrological understanding of, you know, half moon, rising suns, setting moons, I don't know. Shout out to all those Libras out there. Did you get a gold plaque for hitting 1 million subs? Yes, we got a gold plaque somewhere. It is still in the box. Uh, what's in the box? I love gold. But we will, and we'll actually do a little video on it when we open it up. And more importantly, thank you all for getting us there. Without you as a viewer and a subscriber, we've never gotten this black. What's the gnarliest or most gruesome thing you've ever seen or treated in the hospital? A lot of things. So I'm an ER doctor. Everything is gnarly, nasty, that sort of thing. In general, the gnarly things that come in are basically amputations and basically the inside showing up on the outsides. Those are probably the most gnarly and the most Interesting is typically when somebody shoves something inside their body that shouldn't be there. And that ranges from household items, to foods, to fruits, to things that are uncooked, to glassware. Like it just depends on the individual and their creativity. Please don't do that. If you can imagine it, I've probably seen it. <laughs> what would be your second choice for a specialty if you couldn't be an ER doctor? There's two that come to mind. I really liked dermatology because of the lifestyle. You do cool procedures, you hopefully catch melanoma and prevent somebody from dying from bad skin diseases. I couldn't do it because of the day in and day out practice of it. I didn't wanna be in an office setting like that, looking at skin all day long. The other one was actually the surgical aspect of an OBGYN. You get to fix and help individuals, but I want to see people front and center, figure out what's going on, the mental component of trying to figure out the problem, and then having a team of doctors behind you to help support and treat this individual. So getting the ball rolling for an individual is more what I enjoy doing. Have you ever treated anyone who was in combat? I've treated people in the military that have had different types of traumatic type injuries, just based on the location where I work. But again, they're very similar to civilian type of injuries where it's gunshot wounds. Someone's gotta suck out the bullet. 
or explosive devices or major traumas. And so currently every single ER doctor in the United States is trained in trauma to handle any trauma that walks through a door. What's something about you that most people might be surprised to learn? I'm pretty athletic, you know, being a ex-soccer player and playing golf, I'm very coordinated. So you know, my wife, when we first started dating, was shocked at like how good I was at different activities, even like bowling, darts and billiards, but then any sport I could play as well. So you come over to our house and we have every single type of like sporting equipment possible just because we like to play all the different sports. Oh, and I can juggle. All right, that was awesome. I hope you guys got to learn a little bit more about me in round two of getting personal with Dr. Wagner. Keep your questions coming. I love answering them. I'm an open book, so just ask them and if they're appropriate, I will answer them. So if you guys enjoyed this, definitely check out this playlist right here, binge watch everything. And as always, please make sure you subscribe, turn your bell notifications on and hit that like button for me. Thank you so much for watching and stay healthy, my friends. And if you haven't already done so, check out my new supplement company, Life Happens.